Okay, thank you very much for joining the second webinar, which has been which is by Fiji Consulting LLP for you people. And thank you very much for sparing your time on the Saturday morning. Uh, the entire day we work, and then again Saturday morning we are we are attending a webinar. So we thank you very much for your time. Uh, before we start uh, the topic for the day, which is uh, the which is uh, Federal Reserve hike and the impact on the impact on the global financial market. Do you have any questions in place in uh, which you would like us to answer, or uh, shall we continue with our uh, topic? Because this is not a presentation-based topic, but I will put before something uh, before you, you know, uh, which makes uh, which makes sense. And in case you have any question, you are uh, welcome to ask. I never mind. You know me. Okay, let let us go. Ah. Uh, 8 November 2016 Trump has been elected as a president of United States and now uh, he is uh, settling his uh, cabinet and every second day there is a not every second day every second minute there is a news which is coming on the Bloomberg TV like I am talking to you and also speaking on the Bloomberg TV looking at the Bloomberg TV right away in which there is a interview which is coming of a wine company so a Bloomberg TV continue to report what his cabinet would look like, and unfortunately for India, unfortunately for uh, United States, what did happen that the the next Treasury Secretary is a very hawkish person. Of course, there is a great saying that uh, a dovish person will never go for a dovish papa, a dovish partner, and a hawkish person will never go for a for a dovish part, uh, vice versa. Now, first of all, what do you mean by dovish? Anybody is having idea that from the central bank point of view, what do you mean by dovish and uh, hawkish? Any guess? What is dovish and hawkish? Is uh, Urjit Patel is dovish or hawkish, or both? Five people. Any guess? A dovish is a person who is a dovish is a person he had you know something like this. Chalta hai attitude. A dovish is a person chalta hai attitude in in Hindi. But a dovish is a person who is following who is a deep supporter of accommodative accommodative monetary policy. Now what do you mean by accommodative monetary policy is the first thing which we need to understand when we are talking from Fed perspective. So this story started 2008. When we saw that 13 September 2008, what did happen when Lehman Fried filed for crisis? There is a very beautiful movie or, or uh, made by Hollywood, which is Margin Call, and you can look at that movie. You will make a lot of sense out of it. So, what did happen post 2008? Majority of the central bank, uh, thanks Ashish. Majority of the majority of the central bank went forward, and they just followed the accommodative monetary policy blindly, out of which your so-called Federal Reserve. you are uh, so called uh, european central bank your swiss national bank and they all were there now what did happen it took several years for federal reserve almost more than a decade for uh, federal reserve to increase the interest rate by that to one that to 0.25% or 25 basis point now federal reserve is amongst the very powerful central bankers we have and and unfortunately for india and fortunately for the united states now federal reserve would be more powerful the re reason here is the person who is heading the federal reserve uh, first of all there is a big speculation in the bloomberg that the jalent yellen will go in 2017 jalent yellen will go and as per the like, several uh, interviews which i saw on the bloomberg tv including the interview of uh, mr bill gross who is currently acting as a uh, acting as a portfolio manager for genus capital and in fact for bill gross we we should say that the man who started uh, who taught the world that how a bond trading would look like so as per bill gross the 2017 federal reserve will not only hike the rate twice by 25 basis point at least at least but would also uh, but would also uh, see the exit of the jalent yellen the current cabinet the current treasury secretary is very also very hawkish in nature so what would happen if federal reserve today what is the federal reserve rate any five can anyone tell me how much federal fund rate is offering nowadays wow very good 0.25 absolutely right how much federal reserve is offering nowadays anybody is having an idea all five wrong guesses are always welcome but guesses are welcome 
people getting my voice how much uh, federalism is offering nowadays how much interest they are offering what is the federal fund rate sitting today which is 3rd december 2016 what is federal fund rates 0.50 it is 0.50 so as per expectations from the market that december federal reserve will hike the rate by 25 basis point which will take the take it to 0.75% and here comes a absolutely shock in the financial markets of the globe and there are reason behind the same in our view which is the view of the treasury consulting llp suggests that if federal reserve will hike the rate by 25 basis point and take it to 0.75% now look at the white board here please take it to 0.75% then the one country then the following countries will will more will face the shock more than the other countries number 1 would be india now i will i will use some technical term uh, i will uh, you know I replace this technical term with the replace the term shock with the technical term but just give me 5 minutes because i need to make some ground so first is india another is indonesia third is my favorite country second favorite country is singapore fourth is my number one country australia and number fifth would be tokyo can anyone help me uh, in understanding why these five countries i uh, let me increase the font say uh, 35 why these five countries will will face an issue or or shock because i am going to replace this shock with a technical term can all the five people those who are here can can you can you please let me know how why these five countries which is india indonesia singapore australia and tokyo why they are going to be hit first then the so called uh, there are lot of lot of countries you have europe you have swiss you have many countries across the globe why these five countries will will face an issue if the federal reserve would hike an interest rate by 25 bps somewhere in december and say by 25 bps somewhere in april 2017 please be open open your mind because believe me that if federal reserve would hike the rate then it is not going to be easy for india and this phenomena is technically is known as the shock which we are mentioning that is not writing the shock which we are mentioning is known as is known as reverse carry this is known as reverse carry now what is reverse carry you first need to you first need to understand what is carry and then because how unfortunately uh people generally saying that the hit in the global financial market and i also need need to mention you during the advertisement of the webinar but actually it is not that this is a reverse carry phenomena now what is a reverse carry phenomena which is like that sitting today an american investor is getting 0.50% in us and this gentleman was not is was getting 8.75% in india when mr subara was there as a central banker because subara was having a policy that india should not uh, decrease the interest rate rather they should they should kept it at a higher level and that policy worked for india unfortunately due to politics and lot of things that subara never be never been able to get uh, the acknowledgement what he deserves so as raghunam rajan raghunam rajan also did a wonderful job by keeping interest rate at a good level but unfortunately we know that uh, the current situation and the current governor and so on so forth not to mention more about that so what did happen at that moment a us investor was getting 0.50 and now this now and in india he was getting 8.75% now what he used to do he used to sell dollars in india and he used to invest in india where he was making 8.75% now this is going to be a beautiful phenomena and this is carry what is carry because indian rupee dollar to indian rupee which is again i'm not saying amongst top 25 global traded currency of the world please remember 
dollar to INR is still not touched top 25 traded currency of the world, even if you include the NTF also, first and first. Secondly, what did happen over the period of the time, you know, people started investing in India. Unfortunately, the words carry, reverse carry, which we are mentioning here, if, if anybody from SEBI would come, he would mention this as the phenomena of participatory notes. Because people, because SEBI is saying there are a lot of people who are investing in India, those who are not authorized, but they are investing because of participatory note. Now, over the period, what happened? Indian government changed, mindset changed, and a lot of uh, political situation happened. Because of this, a uh, lot of pressure on the central governor. And you, you know that today's scene, RBI went towards accommodative monetary policy. And you know that from 8.75% to 6.25% today, and we all know very well that that in January, when the Reserve Bank of India is going to meet again, they are going to reduce at least by 25 basis points. So from 6.25%, which is the current repo rate, they are going to, they, I am writing here, from they are going to decrease to 6%, at least 25 basis point cut is that has already been taken by the market. Now, if this cut would continue to happen, then over the period, India would lose the appetite of a foreign investor, which Srinivasan rightly said that Asian markets are, Neelam said, all Asian markets are going to hit. But unfortunately, all Asian markets are not going to be hit. Like there is a very good term in cricket, which is that your loss is my gain and my loss is your gain. Amongst that, India would be a major hit, in my personal opinion, and Indonesia would be a major gainer. Can anyone please tell me why Indonesia would be a major gainer and why India would be a hit? Indonesia is a country which is not substantial, a country which is not highly educated, a country where the central bank don't have a global uh, phenomena. The country is also having a lot of corruption, not much business is happening. But why, why Indonesia is turning out to be, why Indonesia will gain and why India would lose? Any guess? And these all things which we need to understand, which unfortunately our media will never uh, disclose to the people. Any guess why Indonesia will gain? You getting my voice? Why Indonesia will gain? Okay, I will answer in the interest of time. Why Indonesia will gain is that today, now first of all the problem with India, Problem with the first two countries is that, please note carefully I'm writing, they do not have, they do not have a standard sovereign rate. Unfortunately, majority of the traders in the foreign exchange say 10 year yield is trading at 6.18% which is trading today and so on and so forth. I would like to ask this question and several times ask, ask this question from a from lot of people that this so-called 10-year yield is not a standard. So this is not a standard. Standard in the sense like if a moment in the 10-year would happen, then this would either cut or increase the interest rate across the market. Because henceforth, there is a lot of word that the monetary policy mechanism of the India is not good. Now, what is monetary policy mechanism that? Now, today, 10-year yield in India is trading at 6.18%. And this is getting down. Once in January, RBI will cut the rate by, by 25 basis points. This will go to further 5.80. I would like to ask one technical question before moving forward from everybody. By writing 10-year yield, India, 6.18%. Can anyone tell me one thing which is currently in discussion only in Bloomberg TV, not anywhere, even your so-called economic times alignment? By writing 10-year trading at 6.18. Can anyone please tell me what is one line which is hitting your mind first? And ideally should have hit your mind because you all understand market very well. If you are saying, suppose you are invited by Bloomberg TV or NDTV Profit or CNBC and somebody is posing your question that 10 year yield is trading at 6.18% and which is what it is trading today. What is What would be your first impression? All six people, can anyone tell me? What would be your first impression? If you are invited in a business channel and you you has been asked that if 10 year yield is getting at 6.18%. 
you all understand indian financial markets very well i will tell you what is your repo rate how much is your repo rate 6.25% how much is the reverse repo how much is the reverse repo of india sir reverse repo this is this is f 5.75 right now can you tell me a phenomena in the indian financial market on a often basis not on a seldom basis when the 10 year yield is trading less than the repo rate if you carefully see the history of subarao and raguram rajan 5 years of subarao and 3 years of raguram rajan total 8 years you will get to know you will get to know that during their tenure the 10 year gsec was always 3250 basis point sometimes greater but minimum 3250 basis point greater than the 10 greater than the repo rate it means the market was offering higher rate what reserve bank used to charge from the banks if they need a funding which we known as repo or which we known known as repurchase obligations unfortunately immediately after urjit patel if we carefully took out the chart of the repo and the 10 year yield you will get to know that indian 10 year yield has been declined to 6.18 declined lesser than the repo which was not been the case in the last 8 year when mr subarao and raguram rajan was there now if you look at the business newspaper what they will they will treat this that way they will say india is getting lot of money from outside and so there is a big pressure on the gsec yield and gsec yield is falling now i would like to understand one thing from the carry perspective and the federal reserve rate perspective if you are an american investor and this is the scene everybody getting white board all the six people getting white board if this is the scene then where you go 10 year 7.70% singapore in dollar terms 1.40% australia approximately 3% my mistake dollar and this is tokyo is known as invest tokyo is known as funding carry because nobody will invest in tokyo people will take fund funding carry is approximately zero if not negative now tell me where where you would invest if if as an is if as a person who is sitting in the new york or london or anywhere where you would invest and why indonesia this is an answer why indonesia is turning out to be an important source for the carry in india but unfortunately indian media is as usual more the return more the benefit and this is all investment grade this is not a non investment grade which we are talking about please note we have not taken one country two countries into consideration which are i am not saying they are uh, defaulted countries but they are still a carry country but unfortunately not earned the recognition here is that let me guess from you can you please uh, tell me two countries who are turning out to be a source of carry but still not got the designation or as a carry currency like indonesia got a got the designation as a carry country singapore is a carry country australia is of course a carry country since years tokyo is a funding carry because interest rate is zero two countries who are who are investment carry but due to some political issues or whatever marketing related issues they never got uh, their position as a carry no south africa is not south africa is a high volatile currency sir zar see the bloomberg tv zar is a high volatile and politically right now they have a big political issue which is going on in their parliament regarding some scam one is philippines and one is do you know how much is the yield 10 year brazilian is offering how much yield 10 year brazilian is offering 
this is approximately greater than 14%. Greater than 14%. I don't have an exact figure, but this is greater than 14%. But these two countries, Philippines and Brazil, are yet to get the status of uh, of a carry currency. And I'm not sure how uh, how soon they will get. But I my uh, sense is that Philippines would surely get a status of carry currency. So back to the point. After giving all the background. If Federal Reserve would hike the rate in in December, which would probably happen, because because uh, Trump has clearly said that Fed will hike the interest rate three times at least in 2017, then India is gone, simply gone, because Indian Indian 10-year GSEC will reduce to less than six percent and it might touch 5.7 or 5.6 also over a period of the time. Over the period of the time. So Brazil was 12.35. I remember it uh, 14. So secondly, India is following accommodative, accommodative monetary policy. So now India would be hit twice. Number one, Federal Reserve would hike the rate by 25 basis points. Secondly, Indian repo rate would cut up by at least 50 basis points. And we can substantiate this premium from the fact that Indian INR USD INR premiums. How much is the USD INR premium, which is going on for uh, for one year? How much USD INR premium, which is going on on one year, with the highest of five rupee forty paisa on the premium? How much Indian uh, Indian premium is going on? It is going between two point five to two point six. Per year, so you have one year forward is equals to spot plus one year premiums, which is sixty eight plus two point five. I'm not uh, taking the flat rate, sixty eight point two two. I I'm assuming it is sixty eight. Second, yes. Now we'll hold for a two or three minutes break, and then I explain you more about the reverse carry, and then I will tell you that how Australia hands is moving towards reverse carry, and Singapore is moving towards carry in the near future, and how Tokyo would continue to be a funding carry even if Federal Reserve would hike the rate by 25 basis points. In the meantime, five minutes. Any questions you want to ask? any questions anybody all the all the six people they would like to ask they are welcome and in the last we will tell you how to trade usd ira any questions you would like to ask Thomson Reuters, sir. Thomson Reuters. Politically speaking, if you are asking from me, uh, demonetization is good and bad for the USD INR. I don't think that demonetization is a good step, which is taken up by India. First thing, even uh, a lot of international economists uh, across the globe, they already mentioned several times, uh, coming to the international media, that uh, this demonetization is not good for India over over the longer tenor. Because sitting today, what people are seeing is that. Uh, uh approximately 8.43 lakh crores of money is coming in the banking system but this money will go out also yes over the period uh, statistically speaking uh, the reduction in the premiums uh, there is a little contribution by the lot amount of money which is in the market also but there is one school of thought also when it comes to the demonetization and unfortunately this school of thought is not getting discussed in the media as usual politics play a important role in india than the knowledge Which is that uh, rather than uh, hiking the CRR by, by rather than hiking the CRR by RBI, RBI should have done the sterilization. Because if you if you remember uh, completely, I I don't have time to explain sterilization, but I'll in short. If you remember that uh, during the complete five years of his tenure by Subarao, Subarao it was Subarao who preferred sterilization. 
in fact i am not saying that central bank was not aware about stabilization or mr y y reddy was not aware about who was before subarao but uh, but subarao was the first person who introduced sterilization in the market and the way he did a way he sterilized the liquidity in the market with the foreign exchange and especially when this gentleman was took over in 2008 and immediately one week after of his uh, official joining the global financial crisis happened he is a perfect example of how to how to do sterilization in the financial market and you know more about sterilization you can refer his book which is uh, who moved my interest rate i'm reading this book whenever i get time this is a very beautiful book and subarao explained this that how rbi works and how sterilization works so i hope you uh, you are watching bloomberg tv and you watch the live live mint uh, uh, financial uh, conference that happened in the singapore uh, recently last month and since we know that mr subarao currently stays 6 months in singapore because he is a faculty member of national university of singapore so subarao was there as a chief guest and what subarao explained is a very good thing subarao said rather than increasing the crr but if i would have uh, if i acted as a rbi governor this time i would have do the sterilization full sterilization and this way i not only not only mitigated the mitigated the you know the liquidity in the system but also able to kept inr at a high level right and if we look at the next 3 years of sub after Three years post Subarao, which is Raghuram Rajan. Then Raghuram Rajan is also a supporter of uh, sterilization, but unfortunately there is a viewpoint difference. Like uh, Subarao was full sterilization and Raghuram Rajan was semi sterilization, and Urjit Patel is no sterilization, because sterilization is a technical term, and we which we should not expect from somebody who don't deserve to be a central banker, to be honest. So henceforth both Subarao and Raghuram Rajan did sterilization. demonetization would have been a successful experience for inr if rbi would have did sterilization not one time multiple time but unfortunately reserve bank of india is not doing any sterilization effective 8 november 2016 rather than they are pumping a huge amount of money in the market by selling dollars to mitigate the volatility in inr this is not good this is not how the things would work in the system and over the period today it might be usd inr is trading at 68.22 but in my personal view this is a buy call uh, from 68.10 to 68.15 in fact i would also buy from here i don't think rbi uh, inr will go uh, back to 60 66.66 level it would further go up because federal reserve hike is prominently imminent and and last thing which i wanted to tell you about australia and all which we can link with the same so our inr is heading towards 72 by march in fact dbs singapore city bank and jp morgan in their uh, in their research reports have confirmed that inr is heading towards 72 by march roughly 72 by march and they said that inr would be close to 69 or 6850 uh, somewhere december 2016 any any more question hope your question uh, got answered nina any more question because i never uh, answer uh, demonetization from a from a political perspective to be honest i'm not a political person yes any any any, any more question kini marsan sir ma'am you anybody um, ashish so no question means nothing understood right It is always a tricky concept, sir. Always a tricky. What do you think? Federal Reserve concept is very easy. Economic times don't know how, how what other things would happen. Life is very tricky, sir. The more you read, the more you will get to know. Chalo, let's move forward. Now, there if there would be another impact of the Federal Reserve on India on the global financial system, which is commodities. unfortunately we tend to believe that uh, commodities uh, you know uh, commodity uh, we tend to believe that the hike in the interest rate would only impact the so called currencies and all which we discuss a little bit in detail it would impact commodities also as per the lot of interviews that has happened on the bloomberg tv a number of senior economists came and shared their thoughts i also agree with majority of them if fed would hike interest rate then commodities will down from here and 
and according to what did happen? One minute, my screen goes blank. Minute. Okay, now you're getting me. Okay. Another impact would be happen on the commodities. Unfortunately, we take, we, we take this as granted. How we take this as granted is, according to a lot of interviews that happen on the Bloomberg TV, if Fed would hike an interest rate, then commodities will down from here. And if commodities will down from here, so there was an interview that has happened a few days ago when some senior member uh, who is a producer petroleum expert, he was there and he was asked a question that if Federal Reserve would hike an interest rate by 25 basis point, where do you see uh, where where do you see the you know the brand the brand will go? I'll I'll come into Goldman. One minute. Uh, he said that today Brent is trading 47.60 and if Fed Reserve would hike one, then uh, in, uh, hike an interest rate by 25 basis point, then at Brent will down from here to at least 44 or 42. But we won't see a sudden downturn in the brand. The reason is. If we carefully watching the international media and, and uh, the Bloomberg TV and other uh, big thing that Russia and majority of the OPEC members have already prepared for the same. From January 2017, they have decided to cut at least 1.5 million barrels of production per day. So if they would cut the production by 1.5 1, 1 billion dollar which excludes the production cut up by uh, by Russia uh, by Russia yes by other members so 1.5 million dollar is only by Russia the total would approximately be greater than 2 million dollars or 2 million barrels in a day and if this would happen then one fact is sure that even though Fed would hike an interest rate the impact on the oil would be limited so if today it is trading at 47.60 then it might go to 45 or 40 from 44 from here they will they, they from here they will pick it up and uh, move forward what do you mean by again what was your question now we'll come to gold what was your question Neelam? okay now coming to gold Gold was 1350 when uh, the so-called Mr. Trump got elected because 99.99% people were of view that uh, uh, Mr. Mrs. Clinton would come, but unfortunately that not happened. In fact, I was having view that the Trump would come, and you know that uh, all the people from my group, I was consistently saying that the Trump would come. Now, what it happened? Uh, oil, uh, gold was 1350. Now, gold and dollar are reverse. Dollar is gaining strength. Now I have a question to all the five people, those who are here. Can all the five people please tell me from where you can see that the dollar is gaining strength or dollar is losing strength? What is an index across the go across my mistake? What are the two indexes across the globe which will tell you that dollar is either gaining strength or losing strength? Five people. Dollar index is technically known as, sir, dollar index is a misnomer, technically, technically dollar index is known as USDX, some people will refer DXY, but USDX and DXY is not an accurate measure of a dollar index. But unfortunately, this is scheduled to happen. How the how this has happened? We, we believe that dollar index is right. Now, currently dollar index is trading at 101.68, something like this. Now, there is another beautiful measure of the dollar index, which covers the movement in the Asian currencies also, which people don't take into consideration. Because why? 
majority of the people do not have an access to bloomberg neither they would like to watch it which is bbdxy which is bloomberg dollar index if you look at the usdx or dxy both are same thing now what happened this is nothing but the copycat of sdr sdr composition you will get here but if you look at this bloomberg dollar index you really get to know that the composition of the asian currencies also in the while computing the dollar strength or the dollar weakness now sitting today i absolutely agree that both dollar index and bloomberg dollar index are growing and dollar is gaining strength today i and today the gold is trading can anyone tell me where gold is trading how much gold is trading in uh, baba 1200 absolutely where gold is getting traded shrinivasan sir i ask this question specifically from you if i will say that gold i don't want to write gold what what is an alternate way i can write sir india se bahar aao come out of india gold is always denominated in dollars x a u rightly said x a u on this is gold now gold is currently 1182 which is close to 1200 right now gold is down from here and according to lot of views and lot of interviews that happened in the international media and my personal view suggests that gold will reach to 1150 initially in the next 3 months which is by march 2017 because january of course we will see a hike in the rate by fed that has already been factored in in the valuation of the gold if from january we cannot predict anything because we need to see that how trump will behave when it comes to the when it comes to placing his person in the fed why i am saying so sitting today the fed have 12 members and there are four vacant seats in fed now four vacant seats in fed it's a highly unfortunate phenomena that even obama during his uh, administration of 8 years 4 into 2 has not filled federal reserve seats completely now these four seats are now trump is having two two things which he need which he need to shoot by one arrow so one arrow and two sparrow i will extend this session by uh, another 5 minutes trump will need to shoot two sparrows from uh, one arrow and two sparrow number one sparrow he need to replace yellen because yellen is a dovish lady secondly he needs to put all the four people those who are vacant currently in the federal reserve and i will give in writing if anybody wanted that 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 trump is going to put the highly aggressive and hawkish person on the board from where we need to see the why i am saying that why i am not been able to give more than a march prediction is because we need to see very carefully that who all these four people those who are getting filled in the federal reserve and if they are hawkish in nature then i might not be surprised that gold will back to 1100 from here 1100 from here and gold is getting down gold is getting down yes any more any more questions so we discussed gold we discussed oil we discussed commodities when it comes to commodity i would like to mention again all the three commodity currencies what are the three commodity currencies can and five people tell me three commodities currencies of the globe wow aussie dollar aud is an aussie dollar three commodity currencies of the globe which are also known as antipodians aussie dollar is one commodity currency of the globe xau and dollar beautiful sir the three commodity currencies of the gold are australian dollar which is known as shortly known as aussie another is known as new zealand dollar which is known as newsy and third which is an american ally which is known as canadian dollar which is known as cad cad the world officially is having three commodity currencies australian dollar new zealand dollar and canadian dollar fourth there is one proxy commodity currency also we have but why we are using proxy because officially this is not a commodity currency which is known as chinese yuan chinese yuan is acting as a proxy commodity currency why because chinese is having the potential or the potent 
to manipulate not manipulate to drive the commodities across the globe the commodities glut that happened in 2012 to 2013 was created by chinese the fall in the commodities of 2014 15 and still moving on is created by chinese and so chinese yuan or rmb is known as a proxy commodity currency but there is two chinese yuan one is cny this is not this is cnh which is an offshore chinese currency this is not a proxy commodity currency so all the three commodities currencies australian dollar new zealand dollar and canadian dollar they all going to face a huge volatility in the near term all volatility south african is not not a commodity currency now there is a regional to it because once we are using the, the proxy commodity currency then south africa sri lanka you know and majority of majority of the african currencies those who are ndf currencies non non tradable currencies or very very a very illiquid illiquid currencies they all are covered in that yes we have five more minutes any questions you would like to ask so this was for the day to introduce you that how the impact would happen on uh, majority of the currency what is reverse carry what rbi should do and so on and so forth any questions you would like to ask you have five complete minutes any questions you would like to ask no questions strange very very strange if i would be at your place i would have asked at least 50 questions how would uh, steel do can we buy sir sorry i i am not in a position to give the equity valuation but i know that i when it comes to steel i know only one thing that tata steel is down from here because of two reason one is political reason you know the war is going on between steel and tata there is no doubt about that and second is uh, because of uh, the steel glut we already have chinese across the globe are cutting the steel production if i'm not wrong i have read carefully if i'm not i remember correctly that i think chinese have a annual production of 800 million metric ton and which they wanted to reduce to 650 or to 600 million metric ton in the near future so if chinese are cutting the steel production then rest you understand very well chorus is down from here uh chorus i think that chinese have already sold chorus if i read correctly in the newspaper on the live meet a uh, one part of the uk business they already sold and in fact there was a great debate which was happening that when the fight is happening between the former chairman and the current chairman now uh the current chairman now then how come a uk based lender would be able to buy for us but that is something which we cannot answer if somebody wants to buy then they will surely buy so the uh, steel is down from here to be honest yield in india the yield would grow in india the yield would grow from the yield perspective the yield would grow because of two reason because of the private uh, because of the crowd out funding anybody having any idea what is crowd out fund funding what is crowd out funding if you are asking this specifically question from the yield okay you have 3 minutes let me explain what is crowd out funding that india is in uh, indian central bank reserve bank of india is taking approximately 600000 crores every year from the domestic markets 600000 crore is a big amount it's not a small amount you know very well now what did happen because of this that the private players were not in the position to take out fund from the market and now they cannot take more because of the current credit scenario which we have on the industry everybody is losing manufacturing is getting down and so on so forth the claims which put up by the government of the gdp is now people are started uh, re reacting that whether these claims are right or not but nonetheless so crowd funding out is a scenario where the government has taken so much money from the market that the private investor for a, for a private investor it is almost next to impossible 
to 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 take out money from the market in india yields would continue to grow because of this reason rbi if you carefully see that reserve bank of india is taking a huge amount of money from the market and this is something which i am not getting one side you have a huge cash reserves you yourself claiming that you have 8.34 lakh crores of money you hide the crr and then you are not doing sterilization and then you are still raising money from the market and that too to an extent of 600000 crore per year so i am not sure exactly what is the technical reason behind the same but my personal intelligence suggest me that if we add all this you know the crr high the demonetization 8.34 lakhs crores and still rising and no sterilization i don't think there is any need that yield would uh, yield should rise but if we collectively see that yields are rising and this is what crowd out is all about so in uh, business newspaper you will never get a word uh, crowd out funding the senior economists will come and they will say that markets are facing crowd out short crowd out crowd out means people are not been able to take money Okay, you have one, one and a half minute to go. Anything more to ask? You're most welcome. We are right here, and I hope you all uh, enjoying our webinars, which Treasury Consulting LLP is doing, and uh, keeping you abreast of all the knowledge. Ashish sir, where are you nowadays? I think you are not reading our uh, group updates. RBI is doing quantitative easing every year, and RBI is doing quantitative easing to an extent that in the year 2015-16 they had given a dividend of 66,000 crores to Reserve Bank of India. 66,000 crore. So all those six people or five people, those who are here, if you are thinking that helicopter money is only happening in in Tokyo, then please go and check yourself. helicopter money is happening in india also rbi is is making lot of dividend from the quantity easing and rbi is doing doing this uh, from the several years but yes during during subarao and raguram rajan the dividend was 25000 to 30000 crore but now it has increased to 66000 crores and we thank you for that thank you very much dost and uh, see you soon